here I am, the mobile car doctor. I'm gonna be working on an 08 Ford Escape, and we're gonna do rear wheel bearings today. Rear wheel bearings. First thing you wanna do is find a secure place to jack up the vehicle. So what you wanna do, and what I like to do, is right down here on the lower arm, is you can use that little piece right there. Put the jack right on the lower arm piece and then jack it up so the tire actually just turns now i just leave it here you're welcome to put a stand under there if you want to it's no big deal grab you a 19 millimeter socket now on the opposite side of the car you want to go ahead and place a 4x4 or some kind of a stopper there behind the opposite tire now if you have a four-way lug you can go ahead and start loosening them first Get them all loose while the jack's where it's supposed to be. Take them all loose. After you're done, if you have a handy gun, this one right here works pretty good. It's got a, this one here is just the uh, 3 8 adapter, but I'm going to put a adapter on it from 3 8 to a half inch. It'll be a lot easier and faster taking all of those out. Okay, put the wheel off the ground. You take all these lugs out. That's it. Sometimes if your tire gets stuck, just give it a good kick right there. Come off, and you can set it in front of you so you can sit on it. This is my trusty helper, Wayne. So sometimes on the rear of this one, sometimes it's hard to get this off. You got a lot of rust you're working with around here. But what we're gonna do is just heat that up. Now, if you have a small butane torch or map gas, this is map gas, it gets pretty hot. You kind of want to just burn the rust out of there. Do a big circle all the way around. I just know and if I do a circle, it's going to expand the metal a little bit and it's going to get the rust nice and hot. So when you go to tapping on it, if you can see where I'm pointing right here, you just tap right there, tap right there, tap right there, tap right there, and tap right there. Then you can come and hit this on the side. So we'll tap right there, go all the way around. You look at the dust moving. See it? Yeah. Sometimes you can just turn it, bounce it around while you're tapping. And then you just tap it right here on this lip. You can actually see the dust coming out of the bottom right there. A lot of rust and a lot of brake dust. So just keep moving it around. Tap right here on this lip this way. And if you have to, just get yourself a little extension, tap it this way from the back of the vehicle, and just keep tapping. You'll see what happens. Then we'll move the rotor around, the drum, excuse me, we'll move the drum. We'll keep doing that. Should be given some sort of a play now. A lot of tapping. Not that easy, but I mean, you just keep working with it. That vibration will loosen it up. Yeah, the first one is easier than this one. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, I'll go ahead and roll it, Wayne. Keep spinning it around. Keep rolling. Coming. It's coming. See how that works? Get you a nice big hammer like this. There it comes. You finally break that. What happens is a lot of rust will come around here. Now that we freed that up, when we put it back together, we'll add a little bit of grease around here and keep the water out. So here we are. There's a lot of brake dust around here. A lot of it came out. 
Now, some brakes are made with asbestos, so you don't want to really blow on it and take a breath. But you can blow on it and back away. And just kind of clean it out a little bit. All right. Now, if you're doing this at your house, you've got to know that there's a nut on the back of this right here with this wheel bearing is and what you'll want to do is undo the nut on the back before you take the tire off I think it's a one and one eighth or a 32 millimeter so you'll have to have one of those ready uh, what we do here is we'll grab this bar right here and use that for the nut and we'll just put a bar here to stabilize it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bar this way, oh, wait a and minute. I am on the passenger side, and then he's going to grab a ratchet and a small torque bar on this side. Here, show him what the nut looks like. Can you see the nut? Yeah. Yep, there's the nut. So he's going to use this and an extension and a bar. Come right around the back of that strut, and then he's going to going to put that together and then this bar right here will hold on the ground this is an old jack handle right here it's an old jack handle solid steel from the 50s or 60s I love it so I've used this for a lot of prying but that's what I'm using today but pretty much you can put anything this way to hold that touches the ground and you won't have to hold it okay, I'm gonna need that, uh, he's back there now bar. okay so right now as we do this nut, you can see there's a lot of rust around it. So what we're going to do is you get a wire brush by hand or a drill and clean it really good before you take the nut off. Because if you don't, the nut will start feeling like it's locking down on you and you'll ruin the nut and possibly the threads on the bolt. And the bolt's part of your hub, this part right here. So you don't want to ruin that, so clean first. That's uh... While Wayne's down there taking care of that and he's uh, wire brushing that bolt I'm gonna go ahead and take this wheel speed sensor off with an eight millimeter use a little screwdriver here and move this to the side and then wiggle that and get that out of there you don't want to do any pressing or anything with that in the way if you break it well you'll have to replace it so we're putting it right back so we want to take good care of it we're gonna pull that out with the eight millimeter so I'm taking this Kind of a pry bar screwdriver type thing i put it right here where this is and this is the wheel speed sensor we catch it right on the very lip of it these things are pretty tough so i'm going to just pull on it a little bit just to get it to move over they are tough now once it moves over a little bit you'll have the opening back here to grab it and flex it out and then just kind of keep flexing it don't break it just go back and forth with it while you do the same thing on the bottom with another screwdriver. So at the same time, you need to pull that out so you don't break it. So now you're going to take your trusty little fire. You go underneath here and you're going to heat the nut up. Heat the nut up uh, for about three minutes. There we go. Now, nah, maybe one minute. It doesn't have to be that long as long as you go all the way around the nut. What that'll do is expand the nut, the metal, and it'll make it easier to unscrew that. Okay, we've been turning that nut in the back for about, oh, three minutes straight. A lot of work. They even crimped the nut. See it. When they put the nut on, on the top, you can see where it's bent a little bit. They crimped it right up there. It's hard to see, but yeah, they crimped it. So that means it's put more pressure down on the threads. So it's a good thing we clean the threads. All right. Okay, now we've got the nut off. Right here's the nut. Bing. It's quite warm because I had to heat it up. But I was able to get the nut off, and he held the bar there. We switched places because your arm will get tired. I'm not going to lie to you. And when you're close to the ground like this, you don't have much room to, to actually be going all the way around in a circle with your bar. And see, we even scraped here a little bit going up and down with it. So anyhow, after you take that off, this little speed sensor 
which actually should be a little tighter than this. It looks like it's war. It should fit on a little shaft on the hub bolt. Look at that. It came right off. See? It's supposed to snugly fit right around that shaft of that bolt. Um, now, it also hits the bearing. So, I'm guessing that it'll also spin with it. So, it's not a big deal. But the other side that we've already done, before I came up with this great idea to do the video, it fit nice and snug around that. Then we put the nut back on, sucked the rest of the hub in. But well, we're going to get to that after a little bit to show you how to do that. Right now, we're going to get the slide hammer out and go to the front. Okay, now you got to use the slide hammer. Don't forget your slide hammer. You look! <laughs> so slide hammer is going to go right on there just like that. You put your original lugs on. You get all your three lugs started. Just like that. Now your lugs aren't going to go all the way down. But they're going to hold that okay, snug and secure. Yeah, we're going to get that gun over there. And we're going to go brrrr. And we're going to tighten those down with a little bit of pneumatic action. Just tighten them down so there's no extra loose vibrations. There we go. And that's how your slide hammer works. You come back, it hits right there. How's that feel now? <laughs> So, we're going to have to bang this around about 75 times to get that hub to come out. And on the back side, I'm going to heat it up real hot with the torch. And that's where I'm going right now. Now, when I heat it up, I'm going to heat the outside of the metal. That's what you want to expand. Now, I'm not going to mess with the middle because if I expand the middle, it's going to be harder to get that out. So, he's going to be banging after I get that nice and hot. for about one minute and then you start banging on it. See, it's, it's not coming. working yet. Yeah, Hold on. It, it came a little bit. Is it coming? Yeah. Let me get it hotter. Go ahead. folks looks like it came out now hold it perfectly straight and pull it once there you go oh look hey Wayne look through the hole yeah look all look put your eye down there look through it oh. say hello Wayne hello Wayne say hello pull it right. all right there it is came right off it didn't take but what was that? That only took like 25 or 30 pulls on that hammer, huh? That slide hammer. Yeah. At this point, folks that are watching this, this is what it should look like right now. Just like that. And if you look over here, there's a lock ring in here. See the two little holes? Now, you either have a tool or you don't have a tool. But you got to pull these two together, get a small screwdriver ready, pop out the bottom. Somewhere down here, you'll see a gap. Put a little screwdriver in there. Now, I'm being little. Look. There's a little screwdriver. And you're just going to pop that out. Now, I like to use these needle nose. These long tip needle nose. They work really good. One reason is you can put the two holes here. And you can take some pliers and squish this with some vice grips and just leave it. I'll try to video this now he's got those in there just like that now I'm going to take these vice grips 
and go right here and I'm just gonna squeeze now watch what happens push you push in and I squeeze look at that we're coming apart all right good deal you give it a few tries a few attempts should be able to master it all right now just push in straight nice and straight ready yeah here we go look at that that pulls it out now hold it still hold it still I got the vice grips on there too. now I'm going to use that driver. little screwdriver yeah, there we go put the screwdriver right here in the back just pry it out and there, there goes your ring there she blows don't forget to put that back now when you get all done with the bearing okay so there that is now we're going to do this setup to pull this bearing out without removing the hub Okay, now I bought this. I think it was on eBay for uh, I think it was one one thirty a while back. And what it is is a bearing puller. It's got almost every size that you can think of for these wheel bearings in here, and it's pretty self-explanatory. We have the bolt already ready down there, and we've got a couple of these already out that we use to pull and press. So from this one, we're going to need this one, this one out. If you buy this kit we're gonna need these two we're gonna need this one right here see one two three so you're gonna need that one and of course you're gonna need this bolt and it comes with a nut you're gonna need the nut the nut fits right in here you can see that it just it's a big long one it sits right there they even give you a couple washers if you want to use those it was a great kit well worth the money so here's the ones that we need here. I'm gonna take those down there with me right now. So right here, you're gonna see there's three rings. I took the one out I needed. It's gonna be the middle one. It's uh, kind of thicker. And uh, what we wanna do is pull the bearing out towards you. So you're gonna need this here so it'll fall into this cup. That cup fits right on there. See, nice and close all the way around. So we want that one right there. Then in the front, I'm gonna put one of these. Now the one for the front that you need can be the larger one. It fits right in there, right over the cup. Then put the bolt through it. And there's the nut to the back. I was telling you, it's a pretty, pretty big one. Look at that. It's threaded on one side, the other side it's not. So you could reach through it and then start screwing it in. Unless you want to screw it in all the way right there on that side. It's good to keep those cleaned out. So that's what he's going to do. I'm going to push the bolt through. And he's going to put a plate back there. One of these plates that fit around the bearing on the back side but in the hole. When it's in the hole and you start pushing over here, it will suck that bearing right out. And here we go. We're going to send him the bolt right through the bearing. And this is my setup on this side. Just like that. Push the bolt in for him, see? I'm going to hold that bolt in. I'm going to get the nut started. Over there. And he has a plate on the other side. I don't know if you can see the plate. plate in there. You can see the little round plate. Okay. Okay, it's finger tight. Alright, finger tight. I can let go of it now. There we go. So what we're gonna do now is tighten this up and hold the back. Yeah. We'll just keep tightening this up. So right here you got your half inch ratchet. That bar right there is holding it from going anywhere. It's got your little small attachment to it, half inch, and you got your 32 millimeter socket in the back. In the front, we got this cup thing with this plate with the bolt in it, and right here is a one inch and one eighth. Right here, one and one eighth. Now, you can take this, set it up in the air, just like that, if you don't have another socket you don't have another ratchet I do have them but we enjoy doing this 
put that together like this and you just pull you hear it coming popping it right out that's the way the cookie crumbles there you go you just keep on turning that and it just keeps popping and here comes that wheel bearing it's coming out of course you won't see it on this side but let me go to the other side and show it to you This isn't the other side. This is the same side. Okay, hold on. I'll go to the other side and show it to you. Look how that's working. Yeah, I can hear something going on. Yeah, look at it. It's just sucking right through. By the time he turns it in the front, it pulls right on out. Don't forget to subscribe, you know, it really helps me out if you subscribe and I get a new video, you can laugh at that one too. <laughs> We're always going to do something funny in our video. I guess you caught today what the slide hammer does, but be aware that's for people who are 18 and older. 18 and older. <laughs> Alright, look, the bearing's almost ready to pop out now, I can see it. Way deep in there. Oh, here it goes. You sound like Mr. Rogers. Look, kids. Look how it slides through with ease. Can I be your neighbor? No, mister, get the hell away from me. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, that's probably why I didn't try out for that show. Uh, here we go. Sucking right through here. Okay. See, I know every time he turns, I can push down on this and it even goes faster. Look right, at that, double, double the turn. Look at that. Now, why didn't I think of that? See, turn this to the right the same time he's doing the front, and it'll be double the pop, double the fun. It's not Wrigley's spearmint gum. All right, looks good. Okay, gotta try to stay, stay together here and sink. I think it's done. Yeah, I think it's out. It's about ready to fall right out. Yep. Oh, there it goes. Barry, Barry, Barry fell out. Now look in the hole. Yeah. Hi, Wayne. There we are. That would make a great cover story right there. Oh, uh, that's a yes, by the way. Now you grab your wire brush. You can do it by hand if you want, but I really like this guy. If you get in here where all that rust was towards the back, just do a big old circle all the way around it. And give this wheel bearing seating a good buffing. All the way to the front, then blow it. Woo! A lot of dust. Now, if you want to have no future problems with this, with that rust accumulating there in the back where the wheel bearing sits, just get you a little bit of racing grease. You don't want a lot because, uh, trust me by experience, the bearing won't seat all the way in the back. The suction and pressure of it won't allow you to bring the bearing all the way in. I've already tried it, so you just want a real thin coat in there. That'll help you seat the new bearing and also keep the water out, which prevents rust from accumulating there. So I went all the way around there. See it? Oh, especially around the edge of the back. Well, that's right where it sits. Man. All right. Where's the new Looking bearing? good. We'll put the new bearing in now. And there's your old wheel bearing right there. Stuck in between here. All right, you can just disassemble that. Keep the old bearing for a house project. You know, it still spins. You can still hold something in there. Uh, as far as this, while you have this off, go ahead and inspect the brakes. They should be that thick, looks good. And that looks great. And inspect the other side. The brake pads look good over there, too. And their shoes, actually, but they look good. All right, so the wheel cylinder. 
Yeah, it's all dirty. What happens when this dust accumulates back here and you've got the drum on, it stays at the bottom of the drum and drags around and you start moving somewhere. It goes up on the outside of your brake pads. It causes your brakes to shake. If you ever noticed you're going fast or slow and you step on your brake and it feels like it's shaking. Well, that's because of all that dust that's in there. So, And it, it did happen to this vehicle. So I went ahead and clean that out we cleaned all this off we got all the excess out of here it'll be a lot better after we put it back together so voila i was just thinking of that here's a brand new bearing now you see it's got digits on one side i'm not going to advertise for this company but mm -mm, that word taste yeah thank you uh huh. I'm gonna you cool you off while you're working company. on your yeah. yeah. Yeah, I might get sued by that company. There you go. Oh, yeah, YouTubers, drink up. Here we go. Ah, wasn't that good? Yeah. Now, if you haven't got one out of your fridge yet, then these commercials don't really work. So. This is just what I like to do. I don't think it really matters which way you put the bearing. The bearing is made the same way on both sides, other than you have whoever manufactured it here, and if someone ever wanted to come and see who did this job, and what parts they used. What does that say? Well, it doesn't say made in China, so let's put it on. Here we go. You put it there, and look at that. You want to actually get a nice little tap on it when you put it there. So what you do is you use one of these little plates, you put it over there, and you use a hammer, and you tap that kind of about four or five times just to get it seated in there straight. There we go. Now, kind of look at it, make sure it's, yeah, hit the bottom a little bit. Bring your fingers in the bottom. Oh, yeah, no. Let me rephrase that. Hit the bottom without hitting my finger a little bit. Now this side. So if you hit the edge of it, you're okay. There, that's good. There, that looks that looks good enough. You don't want to damage the bearing, so you can't really beat on it. Just kind of tap it. Now that it started, you're going to do the same thing in reverse as you're looking for this other one I told you about. It sits there. It's exactly, almost exactly the same diameter as that bearing. That's gonna go right here. You're gonna grab, pull this all apart. We're gonna grab that bolt, put the bolt through the there. Plate back there. Put the plate in the back, but we're gonna put the big plate in the back this time so it doesn't interfere with anything. And then we're gonna crank it up from the front and then do the same thing again. This time it's gonna suck this bearing in. And we'll show you how that's done. This will go here. All right. Look. Can you see it? That's how you should look when you're all hooked right there, up. Right yeah. That's how you should look when you're all hooked up. You get your nut right there. Now you put your 32 nut on there. Socket. 32 socket. Excuse me, yeah. As soon as I find that, I'll get right back with you. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a drill that's got some power behind it, he's going to tighten that one up, the nut, and I'm just going to hold this still right here. And I'm going to watch that suck in. All right, go ahead. Now, you only need to do that till it feels like it's getting tight. And then after that, you'll have about this much room left. Then you want to start doing it by hand. We really don't want to use vibration and damage the bearing. So what we're going to do is he's going to put a, a half inch ratchet in the back with that extension on it on that pole again. And then in the front here, we're going to tighten it in in the front. So here's a little setup right here. You can see the little setup. And we're using that bar up there to hold it stationary right there you 
just right against that bar right there. Now, all you do is just hand turn this in, and you can see this go in real smooth. You want a video or you want to turn this while I'm videoing? I kind of want to see it without moving because I keep moving every time I do. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, you can watch that bearing slide right in real easy. Let's get it go. And folks, this is really the easy part. It really is. You just have to have the setup for a bearing remover bearing installer and it's all in this kit get it on Amazon now I'm not advertising for Amazon but uh, I've been watching on YouTube a lot of these people porch pirates I guess they're calling them that's some funny crap you know they got all kinds of things going on so he's gonna keep turning that until it completely stops it's got to go in about a quarter of an well about 3 sixteenths in on the front so we can put the lock ring in. But it'll actually get seated as soon as he's done. Now, I'm gonna show you this little trick. We did it before. You should take two of these. You take two wrenches and you boot them together and you'll be able to get more torque out of it because it's longer. See, that's a long one. And then, oh Wayne, he's gonna put this like this. See how he did that? Pull on it, look at that. Yeah, that works good. There it goes. That's the right way right there. You see what he does? He's holding it together so when he goes up, it's ready to go again. Yeah, you'll know when it seats. It'll get, it'll get kind of tight. When it's tight, just give it a little bit of up and you're done. He's almost there. And that's what I mean, folks. That kit, you can't go wrong with. Look, it goes in right where it belongs. Right at the very edge of the bearing and right on the inner side of this hole that they have here on your hub assembly. So, Oh, there it goes. That looks great. Yeah. That's it. There it is. He's tight in there. Now we're going to unscrew it. So we're gonna do the same thing with the wrenches. We're gonna unscrew it. Oh, going on the other one. Yeah, right here. That's gonna get on the yeah, other side. Right here. Here, just lift it up. Or he's gonna come on the other side and pull back. There we go. Okay. See if I can use the gun. Yeah, it was. All right, we got the nut for the gun. Oh yeah, yeah. Unscrew it from the back with the gun, and I'll hold this in the front. Okay, now I'm just gonna hold this, and he's gonna. Put it on Lucy. Oh, hold on, hold on. All right, there we go. It came off rather quick. Save you some time. And there it is. Because your next step is putting that hub assembly. And let me show you while you have it out. This is where this ring fits on there. It's going to fit on there this way. See? And it goes right over that. Now see, it's supposed to be tight up against there. And it's not exactly super tight. It just sits on it. There you go. So it sits on there and it'll spin, so it's not super tight. But when you put the nut on there, it'll hold it tight. So that's what matters. It just figures out how fast it's spinning, and the computer does all the assessing after that. Okay, the next step, he's taking the slide hammer off, and there you are, there's your hub. If you don't want to buy another one, that's fine, you can be cheap about it, and that's what we're going to do.
to set it right into place just like that now you're welcome to put a little bit of grease around that shaft if you want to but we're not going to we don't want that slipping at all we want it nice and tight in there so it's going to help you for installation but what we're going to do is make sure it's flat see it's flat in there like that make sure it's completely flat then we're going to tap the center of it with a plate one of those plates in the kit we're going to put a plate in the kit right over that hole we're going to use a hammer just get it started that's all just get it started so what you want to do is put the nut on there on the back side and you can use a drill or do it by hand but you need to start this until you see the hub almost completely in then you want to put that gear on before you continue because it's going to stop about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch oh, yeah, before the nut goes on there so now that you got it like this and you tapped it a little bit it, the nut will fit on the back Okay, he's going to use the gun right now and get it started, get the nut started. You're stripping something. You do not feel that? Yeah, oh no, it's coming. You need to just keep on it. Just keep on it. It's working. Yeah. And you're watching to make sure. Yeah, I'll make it sure. Alright, just keep watching everything. I'm vibrating over there. Okay, we're going to switch batteries. I think that's the deal. Hold on. Okay, so basically you put the drum back on. You want to hand tighten these when it hits when the tire hits the ground. And then you're done with that. And that's pretty much your wheel bearing assembly on that side. It's uh, press in. You get that handy little tool. Like I said, here's that bearing cup slide through. You get that stuff. You're good to go. See, we have these kind of parts here. That one to hold the wheel. That one for the back. The hammer for the, um, for the drum. Got to have a slide hammer. You can rent those at AutoZone and get your money back. You got to have a torch. If you don't, your job's going to be even much harder. All right, but anyway, thanks for joining me. And like I said, if you want to subscribe, feel free to. There's always something funny popping up. All right, thanks for joining the mobile car doctor. Y'all have a good day.